Good morning everybody, we are trying to look at how an acoustic field uh, and a flame coupled together to make thermoacoustic instabilities. I will uh, show some demonstration of how this happens. Uh, first we will uh, see the video of a real experiment. So we have, um, we can have this experiment in a very simple way, you can do it at home by taking like a candle or a Bunsen burner flame and put a glass tube around it and you can repeat the same kind of thing that is here. So all we have here is a, uh, uh, th th there is a uh, pre-mixer for, we are looking at pre-mixed flame. So we are mixing LPG and air here, bring it into a decoupler here which is like a large volume to uh, stop the fluctuations or whatever make everything uniform and then you send it out through this tube and there is a burner here, you can burn here and you can either have a single Bunsen burner type flame or you can have more fancy things like multiple burners. So you can have uh, multiple flames with uh, uh, flames at each of these holes uh, standing and then you put a tube around and you can have the tube with, uh, uh, you can have a tube which has a open end or a closed end. If there is an open end there will be draft or if there is a closed end there will be no draft but either way you can, uh, so you can simulate a closed open end or open open end whichever you want and <coughs> you can make the pressure measurements with microphones and you can use a high speed camera to do imaging or a regular camera to see get a video and we can get the chemiluminescence imaging with a photomultiplier tube uh, with, with appropriate filter. So your flame has radicals, so if you put a uh, filter corresponding to CH radical like 428 nanometer you will image the blue which correspond to CH filter. If you put a 308 uh, nanometer filter you can image the OH in the flame. So these radicals are there present in only in the reaction zone uh, whereas you will see the whole flame to be luminous because there is a black body radiation from the hot gases and you will see everything. So in a regular movie what you see will be the flame luminosity. So that you would see uh, a bigger region uh, but the reaction zone where this uh, actual reactions happen. Uh, you must have studied in pre-mixed flame there is a preheat zone then there is a very thin reaction zone and then there is the products. So the reaction zone would have that, that is the region where you have uh, this radical CH, CC, OH. So you can uh, look at the chemiluminescence from any of these radicals. So these are the uh, things that you can do. It is a very simple experiment and you can uh, set up whatever equivalence ratio you want. You can vary the equivalence ratio, uh, try all kinds of things and then you can track the evolution. So in a mathematical model you have to solve the differential equation to see the evolution but in a reality you just have to look and you can see the evolution, it is an experiment. So we actually have a Bunsen type, uh, Bunsen type flames, it is there on the video. Uh, thanks to Libika Kapiraj who gave me this picture and uh, sorry, one second. Let me show you a video of this image, a video of this experiment. So there is a flame you can see and uh, I will, uh, uh, there is actually a duct but I mean because it is dark everywhere except the flame so you do not really uh, see the duct but there is actually a duct here but it is not illuminated we are just imaging um, just the luminosity from the flame and you can uh, see the video as well as hear the audio which is coming. So you heard that. So this is a nice limit cycle oscillations that occur when you uh, have uh, the uh, uh, fluctuating heat release from the flame coupled with the acoustic field. Now the flame looks very steady in this picture that is because the flame is uh, oscillating at about 200 hertz or something and our eyes cannot track the 200 hertz nor can that particular camera track the 200 hertz. So what we do is we image with a high speed camera something which can do 2000 frames per second or a few thousand frames per second and then play it slowly so that our eyes can see it. because if you, even if you take it at 2000 frames per second and you play at 2000 frames per second you would not see anything. So what you do in high speed uh, movies is you take the, uh, you take the video at a very high speed 5000 frames per second or 6000 or 2000 frames per second at a rate much faster than the frequencies involved in the system and then you play slow, slowly. So you, can, you would have seen in cricket match uh, they show the ball going uh, turning and very nicely and then moving and all that and, and diving in slow motion. Uh, so it, the, uh, you acquire a large number of frames so that is that is the meaning of high speed video. 
uh, normally you take 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second you take much larger than that and play it slowly so that you can uh, sense what, what happened in the short time but you are kind of expanding the time I hope this is clear uh, so if you now see this so you can see that the flame is actually uh, wrinkling and so if you look at the, the wrinkles on the flame surface and you can have depending on the frequency and the amplitudes that are involved the wrinkling can look differently and uh, you can have small amount of wrinkling large amount of wrinkling that is all depending on the experiment but as a result the important thing to notice is the flame area is fluctuating. So if you have a steady flame you have like a tent like flame or something like that like a cone or tent and then be, because the wrinkles are coming so anytime a flame wrinkles the area is uh, changing it is increasing compared to the steady shape and uh, when you increase or in increase the area or decrease the area when you change the area we are basically altering the amount of fuel that is consumed because as long as there is a flame everything that goes through in a premixed flame is, conf uh, is consumed because we are looking at leaner flames I mean if you have of course having rich flame um, only the uh, uh, whatever is the balanced mixture ratio will be burnt there will be excess fuel but if you are having a lean fuel everything will be burnt so whatever is going through the flame is being consumed so as long as you have a flame area you are consuming everything that is coming so if the flame area is wrinkling that means uh, you are having at some instant more area some other instant less area so that means you are consuming more at some instant consuming less at some instant so that is what is the heat release rate and the acoustic field is setting up velocity fluctuations at the flame which is perturbing the flame and we have to look at that I hope this is clear what I am explaining I'll play, uh, you have seen this now Okay. So we can also do a multiple flame experiment so instead of a Bunsen burner flame so in here if you put a burner of this shape you can set up uh, several flames and we can see that I mean uh, in reality in many combustors there will be this kind of configuration this is like a standard configuration which many people study. Uh, so uh, let me play the movie the video. You saw that we'll play one more time. So once again the flames are actually oscillating we are unable to see it because I mean it is oscillating too fast so we have to do the high speed imaging and uh, if we do that so this is how the uh, multiple flames look like yeah, unfortunately you can see three flames on the screen but there is only one <laughs> because it is too bright uh, so we can uh, look at the high speed imaging there is actually a flame here and a flame here if you see carefully you can see it so you can see they are oscillating I will play it again so, so again the flame is oscillating back and forth the flame surface area is increasing and decreasing this is what is making the flame consume more mixture at another instant less mixture mixture at another instant at, at another instant and therefore the heat release is more at some instant less at another instant so you have fluctuating heat release and we are in a confined environment so there is acoustic oscillations and we are having a feedback now which is the message of uh, this slide so the strange okay so the oscillations make the flame wrinkle wrinkling leads to oscillatory heat release so Q prime uh, correlates with area um, area fluctuations and so we need to solve for the area fluctuations of the flame that is the crux of the matter so given given a heat release rate we know how to deal with the acoustic field that is what we did we wrote the equations we had a momentum equation and we have energy equation and the energy equation had a heat release term in it so we know how to deal with it provided you put the heat release term in in the earlier example we put a correlation for heat release given by Maria Hecker now instead we need to put the heat release rate fluctuation that you will get from the premix flame so how do you do that so we need to see what happens to a flame when there is a velocity fluctuation so it will have a lagged response and so on and so forth 
so we have to solve for it and once you solve for this you can input into the acoustic equations and then solve them in a couple couple manner either in the time domain or we can um, do the whole analysis in the frequency domain like we did otherwise. So the objective now of the lesson is to um, write the appropriate equations simple as possible equations for a premix play and try to solve for the flame shape and once you know the flame shape you can get the wrinkling and the flame area and once you know the flame area we know that we can from the flame area we can get the heat release rate. Is this clear what we are trying to do? Any questions about this? Flame oscillation. Ah. Uh, there is naturally, naturally is possible. So uh, yes, uh, what we, what in the, in the movies that I showed here, uh, what we are doing is we uh, have the, see we must have, you must have understood from the everything we did earlier that at some locations flame will be stable, some other locations flame will be unstable. So I can keep the burner at some location where the flame will be stable, light the flame and eventually it will become stay stable and then generally move it to a location where the flame, uh, uh, where the instability can come in. Now to initiate if you are in a, uh, I just use a traverse to move it, yeah I move the tube here, you can either move the flame or the tube in this particular experiment, I have a picture here on side. So in this experiment uh, I am actually moving this uh, tube with respect to burner, it is the relative position that matters. Now the starting perturbation, so we must have, we saw that there are two kinds of instabilities what we call linear instability and non-linear instability. So if you are in a classically stable configuration it will start off with any arbitrarily small disturbance and the world is always having some arbitrarily small disturbance, any small disturbance it can take off. But if you are in a bistable region that means either you can go to a limit cycle or you can come back to a fixed point, then you need an appropriate initial condition which you will have to give it with through some other means by using a loudspeaker or whatever. So in this picture that I showed we are starting with a, uh, uh, you are, we are looking at linearly unstable region, so it will start spontaneously out of any small disturbance, any small disturbance for example if you do experiment here you can hear the hum of those instruments behind or the hum of the air conditioning and, and or somebody may move his hand or sneeze or something anything will act. In um, when you are in a subcritical region it depends on what kind of initial condition and so on. So it depends on the type of uh, uh, the, the type of the signal the type of the initial excitation some excitations are very good even people I mean it's like that somebody tells you, you do not ignore somebody else tells you, oh, you listen to it so it is something like that okay. So I, I hope it is clear, so in these pictures we are starting from a, um, uh, we are under linearly stable conditions, so any perturbation will suffice and I did not do anything here to start, I mean it just spontaneously came on. Any other question? Okay. You can see this kind of thing in pretty much any experiment like in the RK tube we saw very same kind of thing, look at a thermoacoustic engine you will see similar things, any combustion stability, these are, so there, there are some common underlying features and of course, uh, in spite of the fact that the way the heat release re respond will be different in different experiments. For example, in the Rieke tube we saw that uh, there it is the cylinder heat transfer how it oscillates when the flow oscillates, but here that is not the case, here it is the flame that is wrinkling in the Rieke tube there was no wrinkling or anything, it is just the heat, heat transfer in and out when you were blowing back and forth, whereas here it is uh, the, the, the wrinkles and you are having wrinkling. If you are looking at a diffusion flame what would be oscillating the heat release rate, now, suppose you have a diffusion flame what would be oscillating, let us say we do not oscillate the mass flow rate, so let us say we are uh, choked the incoming flow, no, we are having let us say fixed fuel flow rate coming up for yeah well, velocity fluctuation what does it do? No, that is in premix flame, in diffusion flame. It's going to change the diffusion length. Ah, it is going to change the mixing. mixing yeah. So it's going to change the mixing field. So the way the fuel and air are distributed, so it will going to change the flame. So in each uh, each situation, in some other situation like what uh, Mr. Kamblay said, you have uh, uh, you have oscillations and your fuel flow rate can fluctuate or the air flow rate can fluctuate, your equivalence ratio can fluctuate because the you have a delta P across an orifice and as the delta P increases and decreases because when pressure goes up the delta P comes down, when the pressure comes down delta P increases, you are, so you are having a oscillating delta P on the injector so you can 
have an oscillating flow rate. So, in different combustors you have or different geometries, different configurations, we have different mechanisms of the heat release fluctuating. So, you have to study, so there is no general prescription as to how to calculate the heat release rate. For example, in one case you study a hot wire flow over a hot wire, in another case you study wrinkling of a premix flame, in another case we study um, um, how the uh, mixing field changes in a diffusion flame, uh, in another case we study how um, the injection is oscillating as Ganesh pointed out. So, it, it in each situation there is a, a different a different mechanism as to how heat release fluctuate, but in spite of that there is some commonality as to how the oscillations are coming out this linear stability, non-linear stability, bistable region, uh, globally stable, globally unstable those are all common themes in spite of the fact that these experiments have quite a bit of differences, is that clear, it is a good point actually. Any other questions? Okay. So, here the topic today is uh, wrinkling of a anchored flame. Now, you saw that these flames were anchored that means they were fixed to the burner, these are burner stabilized flames. So, the uh, at, at the burner you have a local recirculation zone no matter how small it is and then that will hold the radicals there and you can have the flame sit on that so that it does not blow off. But you can also have flames which are standing off or you can because you, you may not have a flame right at the burner and it may just stand off and uh, uh, lift it and then the heat transfer, uh, the heat transfer there, the dynamics of the heat transfer at the burner lip that will control uh, uh, how, how much the uh, flame is standing off and so on. So, those are complicated and my idea is to reduce everything to toys. So, everything once you have a formula for heat release or, or expression or a calculation procedure computer program some, uh, anything for the heat release rate then we can go back to our old procedure either in time domain or in harmonic domain and then either calculate the uh, uh, stability in time domain with our numerical integration and linearized operator non normality blah 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 or we can look at it in the harmonic domain and look at the eigen values eigen vector stability of the modes. So, all those procedures will come in. So, only thing that is needed is to get a way to calculate the fluctuating heat release and that is the objective is that clear. So, I have uh, instead of studying calculating heat release rate in a flame that is a very general objective. So, I have specific I have brought down the objective to wrinkling of an anchored premix flame. So, I have simplified the problem quite a bit. So, let us first take a look at the geometry of what we are studying. So, this is the lab coordinate system x and y. And let us say this is like a mean flame. So, what is the uh, concept of the mean flame? Or let us say there are no fluctuations and we happen to have a steady flame. Uh, how does a steady flame exist for a premix flame? Premix fuel air velocity. Okay. What is a flame velocity or flame the speed? velocity at which flame will propagate if the uh, fuel air mixture were stationary. Okay. So, you have a fuel air mixture that is stationary and if you light up the flame, it will try to propagate. And how does it propagate? How does a premix flame propagate? This is not a combustion reaction. class, but I think we have to deal with combustion. So, how does the flame propagate? There is a reaction zone reaction. and a uh, heated uh, premix zone premix. and a reaction zone. Yeah. And uh, as soon as reaction is over at every stage, it will accelerate. How does the uh, how does the uh, how does the reactants know that we have to receive the flame? Flame is coming. How does it know? Uh, heat transfer and diffusion. diffusion. I mean, heat transfer due to conduction, and then the species transfer due to diffusion. You have to have some kind of preheating so that the thing will catch fire. Have the flame going, and we need radicals to get the reactions going. We need hot radicals, so that will also diffuse through the flame front. Heat will also diffuse through the flame front, and you go and. Uh, so, it depends on the conductivity, diffusivity and the amount of heat released and, and so on so forth the flame speed. So, in this is the uh, crux of the matter in flame speed. So, flame is trying to propagate and this the speed at which the flame front moves into a quiescent medium of reactants that is called the flame speed. So, that means we are talking about a moving flame front 
but if you light up a Bunsen burner flame you will see flame nice and standing like this. So as Vishnu says the flame speed which actually corresponds to the consumption it, it corresponds to the consumption rate of the reactants okay. So you, you have flame speed uh, uh, which is being balanced by the velocity of the mixture or in other words you have a certain rate at which reactants are consumed and as long as you supply as much as it is consumed then you will have flame from standing okay this is clear and that is how we are getting it in a Bunsen burner or something like that. So we will call this angle theta. Uh, so this is our lab coordinates we will also for convenience we will have another set of coordinates which is eta and psi and let us say this is our flow velocity. Now we will have a so this um, orange line is representative of the premix flame which is wrinkled okay and uh, this zeta equal to zeta of eta comma t so this coordinate is eta this is psi and this is zeta and uh, the reason for going trying to set up things in a flame fixed coordinate system is that again result will look simpler although sometimes it may be advantageous to do in the laboratory coordinate itself but for the time being we will do this way to keep things simple. So this is the geometry and this angle uh, theta is the angle the mean flame uh, makes with respect to laboratory coordinates. So in general I can say r equal to f of t where r is the uh, spatial coordinates of the flame. So I can actually say you know g of r comma t equal to r minus f of t and I can say that so if I define a function r minus f of t where f of t is the location of the flame at any instant uh, which r so this just means the location of the flame is changing in time okay. So if I define a function like this and then it has to be 0 at the flame so this g going to 0 is the flame if it is not 0 it is on this side or that side of the flame and we have to track the g equal to 0 surface so that is the idea okay. I hope this is clear you have r equal to f of t so we can also write the same thing as r minus f of t is 0 so we call a function g of r comma t as r minus f of t we know that at the flame r equal to f of t that means at the flame r minus f of t is equal to 0 which means g is 0 so g is 0 corresponds to the flame otherwise it is on this side or that side of the flame so we track the g equal to 0 surface. I mean not arbitrary I mean flame location I just gave r in general three dimensional now I will write specifically for this I mean you can write this for any complicated flame now specifically for this I will write. So a point on the surface will move with a velocity given by so let me write this So you have a gas velocity and we also have SL which is the flame speed so let me write this SL equal to we are looking at laminar flame and SL is the laminar flame speed. So if uh, V is the velocity of the local fresh mixture and SL is the flame speed V is the
and we need to know what is n, n is the local normal. The unit vector n goes like del g over modulus of del g, which is the local normal to the flame front. So I hope so far is okay. Yeah. Since there is fluctuations here, yeah. can we be sure that we can use lambda frame speed? Yeah, that is a very good question. Eh? Yes, when you are wrinkling, the curvature of the flame changes. So your local heat transfer and all that changes. So laminar speed is a uh, laminar flame speed is a function of many things, including the flame curvature, and uh, so SL itself changes. So he has stumped me, but I'm a theoretician at this moment, so I can put SL varying, and then I will get a more difficult problem. So I assume SL to be constant, and I say that the wrinkling is small. So it's just an assumption uh, that SL is constant. The equation is right, but SL may not be a constant. Okay. Any other questions? So we are tracking the g equal to 0 surface, so dg or dt at the flame will also be 0 because we are looking at the sitting on the g equal to 0 surface. So this can we can write as dou g by dou t plus uh, partial derivative g with respect to partial t plus v flame dot del g okay, so this is straightforward. So now the question is how to write expression for g, so do you have to write a g field solve for it or there is some simpler way for simple problems where you can actually get the equation in a more straightforward way in terms of the flame coordinates, in terms of the flame shape and then solve for the area fluctuation. So that is the objective here. So let me elaborate on this a little bit. So this equation can be rewritten as this where I uh, we said that V flame is um, V minus SL times N that is the imbalance between the velocity of the mixture velocity and the flame speed and so that is what I put in here for V, v flame. So this we can expand as dou G by dou T plus V dot uh, del G equal to SL and we have this expression for N dot del G. So del G dot del G is this magnitude of del G square so this would be SL so we can cancel this. So just to write it nicely, so this equation is referred to in combustion literature often as the G equation. So this is So now we have to see how we can uh, simplify this for this this kind of flame like a cone flame or a tent flame or something. So here we have this as the flame um, um, flame uh, uh, departure of the flame from the mean position or something or, or the local flame height. So the equation so there we can say our 
g can be thought as See this is the coordinate psi, so we can say psi equal to theta of eta comma t. So we can say psi minus zeta of eta comma t equal to 0 and we can say this is g, okay, is it clear? This is the uh, uh, flame height in this direction so that is psi equal to zeta of eta comma t so we just move this to this side and uh, we call that as g. So now given g we have to get expression for del g and then our problem is solved so that is very peaceful del g equal to remember our coordinate system so this is eta and this is psi plus dou g by dou eta into e eta. So dou g by dou psi would be what is dou g by dou psi from this 1 and what is dou g by dou, uh, dou, uh, what is it called? dou zeta dou g by dou zeta hmm? yeah so this will be so this is the expression for del g is this okay straightforward so given this This is the experiment for the magnitude of del G. So we need to evaluate this term V dot del G. That is the last thing left. So V dot del G. U psi E psi plus U eta E eta taking a dot product with del G which is so what is this this is u psi uh, minus u e times So we substitute for V dot del G and SL times magnitude del G with uh, V dot del G here, del G here or the magnitude of del G here and then we can get the final equation. So that would be, so you remember that th this was G, so dou G by dou T will be what? Yeah, exactly. minus dou zeta by dou t because um, psi itself then um, dou psi by dou t will not be there you will have only this thing having a derivative plus can rewrite this nicely as plus
to our g equation as reduced to this simpler equation. We will try to uh, write this in terms of, so at the moment it has both fluctuating and mean quantities together, we will write all the variables as a fluctuating plus a mean quantity and then subtract out the mean part and then we will look at the fluctuations and then maybe we will linearize it also, so that we will get some simple expressions which we can, if you have a linear differential equation we can very likely solve it. So you would say u psi is u psi, uh, u psi bar plus u psi prime and u eta equal to u eta bar plus u eta prime. So if you substitute this here you will get dou psi by dou t plus u eta plus eta prime times dou psi by dou eta equal to u eta bar plus, sorry u psi bar plus u psi prime minus s l into root of So the first thing that we do when you have mean and fluctuating is if we can take a time average of the equation, we can separate out the mean terms. So if you time average these quantities, you will get u u psi bar equal to S L. If you expand this the binomial series then you SL will come out here and this would be the uh, mean equation. So this is what we started with as at the beginning of the class I asked you how does the flame stay and we said that the uh, mixture velocity should balance the flame speed and then you can have a flame staying steady and that is coming out of our analysis, so it is consistent uh, so far. Now we have to wipe this out and we will, we will subtract the mean and drop the nonlinear terms and then you can get emphasis linear equation. So we have removed this mean terms and then we have linearized this term and we have this equation and we have dropped this u eta prime dou eta by dou eta prime or maybe the term is small because it is a product of two terms and we are having uh, assuming that your flame is displacing by small amount and you are also having a small amount of forcing then we drop this term and then this is the radius. So what is u psi prime? Yeah, what does this mean? It is the direction normal to the mean flame shape. So we are being forced by a velocity in a direction normal to mean, mean flame shape, right. I mean so if you have acoustic field it has a certain velocity and pressure, the velocity has a component normal to the flame shape and that is working as a forcing term and uh, what is the physical meaning of this equation. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, in in steady state there is a if there are no fluctuation there is a balance between the mean um, flow speed or the reactant speed and the flame speed. Now if this is perturbed then what happens there will be a imbalance and the flame will either move in or move out depending on which way it is imbalanced. So that causes a wrinkle and the wrinkles are actually 
propagating or being convected on this direction by this velocity compound the velocity in this direction okay is that clear so i think i'll uh, write this down this interpretation so so in for the steady flame there is a balance between So for the steady flame there is a balance between the flame front propagation velocity and the flow velocity perpendicular to the flame. So if this balance is perturbed so that would mean u psi prime not equal to 0 okay that is what is creating the imbalance and then the position of the flame changes the flame wrinkles because if the, if the balance is changed the flame will move that way or this way that is what I mean by the flame wrinkles and the wrinkles are convected along the flame front with the velocity theta bar. So you can see from this equation this is the convective term this convex wrinkles so this is a simple equation we can write a simple integrate this in a straightforward way is this interpretation clear I think once that is clear everything else is clear. So if you define a characteristic speed as u eta bar so let us rewrite this equation here so let us say d eta by dt equal to u eta bar then we can write this equation as d psi by dt plus along this direction you can write by dt into so this would mean that sorry So if you define a characteristic speed as d eta by dt equal to u eta bar then you can rewrite this as d d zeta by dt equal to u psi prime along this characteristic direction okay not in any other direction but along this direction. So along the direction you can integrate it uh, because this is a full derivative so integrate along the characteristics so so we will use primes as the dummy variables dt prime so we know that uh, given this we can say t minus t prime equal to eta minus eta prime by u eta bar okay because u this is a constant velocity here in this particular example so this we can rewrite as 0 to eta
So this is the solution in terms of the characteristics. But uh, more importantly, there is a uh, underlying physical meaning to this. So the flame front, uh, the position of the flame front is not determined by by the present present value of the perturbation velocity, but also by the earlier perturbation which uh, which happened upstream at the position eta minus eta prime and which are now convected to the wave uh, along the wave front with a velocity uh, with a convective velocity u eta bar so so in this case the integral is not just a uh, just integral but integral over the history of all perturbation and which will introduce some kind of non instantaneous or a time lag behavior because you are having a wrinkle and the wrinkle was originated here that then moved uh, up here. So what is happening here not just depends on the velocity local velocity there but also the local wrinkle which actually depends on whatever happened to this flame at some time t earlier. So you can clearly see this is uh, bringing a time lag kind of uh, a time lag into the uh, problem. So we already learned that time lags are very critical and here there is a time lag coming because of this wrinkle which is propagating at u eta prime uh, 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 u eta bar and uh, this will may play a key role in determining the uh, phase and uh, and this will uh, yeah and this time lag will be very very uh, very important in determining whether the flame is driving or, or damping okay because of this time lag will depend upon the flame shape the angle between right the angle, so the flame angle determines what is the flame direction what is the velocity along the flame what is the velocity across the flame so clearly time lag depends on this and we will uh, write so we will do this in a harmonic domain and there perhaps the interpretation of this may be simpler and we look at what causes it how, how we can make more sense of the time lag. But from this time domain solution it is very clear that you, you do not have just an instantaneous response but there is a time lag response and also by uh, looking at just this differential equation you see these rings are being convected so when something is convecting everything in the past will affect what is happening at this time. So stop here now.